Simulan mong abutin ang iyong pangarap Na magbibigay danga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin Hindi laging nandyan dapat mong harapin Kami iyong kasama sa bawat takin Magkaakbay nating lulutasin Dito sa Gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanuri Sundin ang wasto at nararapat Kagandahang nasal ang ipakita Ipadama ang pusong may malasakit Dito sa Fernandino Ating harapin ng walang takot Sasamahan ka ni Fernan At dino ang bagong barkada mo Fernandino Tint TV Good morning, Fernandina Teens. Welcome to Fernandina Teens TV Season 2. I am Ma'am Jerica, your agriculture teacher for today. Before we start with our discussion, I want you to observe the first picture. What did you observe? You may write your answer on the comment box below. If you said that the first picture shows a plant with yellow leaves and it looks unhealthy, you are correct. Later, we will give a solution to that. For this episode, our objectives are the following. First, define plant food and fertilizer. Second, know the plant food elements and their function. Third, identify the kinds of fertilizer. Our lesson for today is all about fertilizer and nutrients. What comes in your mind when you hear the word nutrients? Do you have any idea about the plant food nutrients? Later, we will discuss that further. Let us define some words that we may encounter in our lesson. First word is plant food. Plant food is made from nutrients in the soil as well as other essential elements like air, 
water, and sunlight. This food is composed of certain chemical elements often referred as plant food elements. Second word is fertilizer. Fertilizer is any organic and inorganic material of natural or with synthetic origin which is added to the soil to supply certain elements essential to plant growth. Third word is concoction. Concoction is something that has been made from several things mixed together. Example of concoctions are fermented plant juice, fermented fruit juice, and fish amino acid. Now, let us know the different plant food elements or plant essential elements and their functions. 16 chemical elements are known to be important to a plant's growth and survival. The 16 chemical elements are divided into two main groups, non-mineral and mineral. The first group is non-mineral nutrients. The non-mineral nutrients are hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. These nutrients are found in the air and water. In a process called photosynthesis, plants use energy from the sun to change carbon dioxide and water into starches and sugars. These starches and sugars are the plant foods. And the second group is mineral nutrients. Mineral nutrients are divided into two more groups, the macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients can be broken into two groups, primary and secondary nutrients. The primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These major nutrients are lacking from the soil first because plants use large amounts for their growth and survival. Nitrogen promotes dark green color, leaf, stem, and fruit development and hastens growth and increases the protein content of the crop. Phosphorus favors rapid plant growth and development, hastens fruiting and maturity and improves the quality of the crop. Potassium hastens maturity, stimulates blooming, aids in seed formation, and gives plants hardiness. Secondary nutrients are calcium, corrects acidity, acts as protective sieve for the nitrates to set through in passing into the cell and act as a cement between the walls of the cells to hold them together. Magnesium, the key element in the molecule of chlorophyll and combines with the phosphates so that the latter can move to their proper places in the plant. Sulfur, gives green color to the younger leaves including the veins. The second mineral nutrients are micronutrients. Micronutrients are those elements essential for plant growth which are needed in only very small quantities. These elements are sometimes called minor elements or trace elements. The micronutrients are the following. Boron. Boron hunger results in the reddish-yellow discoloration and often there is a purplish tone first seen on the margins of the leaves or the tip half. Copper helps in seed stock formation. Iron treats chlorosis. Chloride tends to concentrate in some plants in the veins and floral parts and appears to, the, to be tied up in some way in the formation of the red, blue, and violet pigments. Hasen maturity. Manganese gives green color to the younger leaves, including the veins. Molybdenum influences the utilization of nitrogen by the plant and it's required before nitrogen-fixing bacteria can utilize atmospheric nitrogen. 
and zinc. Traits of normality, small leaves or leaves that are yellow or matted in appearance. Plant food refers to the necessary materials which a plant uses so it can build, build new tissues and at the same time carry on its normal functions. According to McVicar, fertilizer is any manufactured or processed materials or mixtures of materials that contains one or more of the recognized plant food elements in liquid or dry form. On the other hand, Ingo claimed that the fertilizer is any organic or inorganic material of natural or synthetic origin which is added to the soil to supply certain elements essential to plant growth. Fertilizers are used to increase the growth rate, yield, and quality or nutritive value of plants. Later, you will learn more about the two kinds of fertilizers after commercial break. Stay tuned! Ang Schools Division Office City of San Fernando, Pampanga ay kaisa ng Department of Education sa pagsasagawa ng mga proyekto at programa na tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga mag-aaral. Inilunsad ang Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors upang magbigay ng educational at psychological assistance sa mga mag-aaral, magulang at stakeholders ng division. Kaya, kung may nais kayong itanong tungkol sa pag-aaral, maaaring magpadala ng mensahe sa Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors Facebook page o tumawag sa mga numero na makikita sa ibaba ng inyong screen tuwing lunes hanggang biyernes sa ganap na alas 8 ng umaga hanggang alas 6 ng gabi. Maaari rin kayong sumangguni sa ating guidance counselors na nagbibigay ng guidance and counseling services. Lahat ng inyong ibabahagi ay mananatiling confidential. Ang nasabing programa ay nagsisilbing daan upang malaman ang feedbacks ng stakeholders para matulungan ng ating division na mapagbuti pa ang mga sumusunod na programa. Ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Tumawag na sa aming mga numero o bumisita na sa aming Facebook page at magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan. Fernandino Teens TV You are still watching Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. Earlier, you were able to understand and learn the different plant food nutrients and their functions. Now, let us have a recap by having a short activity called Fact or Bluff. Directions. You are going to comment a happy emoji if your answer is fuck, and comment a sad emoji if your answer is bluff. Are you ready? Let us start. First item. Macronutrients are those elements essential for plant growth which are needed in only very small quantities. Is it a fuck or a bluff? Correct. The answer is bluff. Micronutrients are those elements essential for plant growth which are needed in only very small quantities. Second item. The primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Is it a fact or a bluff? Yes, the answer is fact. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are the primary nutrients. Third item. Mineral nutrients are found in the air and water. Is it a fact or a bluff? Precisely, the answer is bluff. Non-mineral nutrients like carbon, Hydrogen and oxygen are found in the air and water. Fourth item. To hasten growth and increase the protein content of the crop, the plant needs nitrogen nutrients. Is it a fact or a bluff? 
Very good. The answer is fact. Nitrogen promotes dark green color, leaf stem, and fruit development, and hastens growth and increases the protein content of the crop. And the last item. Phosphorus favors rapid plant growth and development, hastens fruiting and maturity, and improves the quality of the crop. Is it a fact or a bluff? Right, the answer is fact. I hope all of you got the correct answers. Now, let us discuss fertilizer. In your own understanding, what is fertilizer? You can answer orally and give your answer or type it on the comment section. Yes, all your answers are correct. Fertilizer is any material or natural or synthetic origin that is applied to soil or to the plant tissues to supply plant nutrients. What do you think are the kinds of fertilizer? Type your answer on the comment section. Precisely, organic and inorganic are the two kinds of fertilizer. Organic fertilizers are farm manures, compost, crop residues, and other farm waste which supply nutrients and improve soil physical conditions. Organic fertilizer is generally the most valuable soil conditioner. As soil conditioners, organic fertilizer helps prevent soil erosion, crushing, and cracking of soil. They retain soil humidity and improve the internal drainage of the soil. These fertilizers should serve as supplement to inorganic fertilizers. This improves the physical makeup of the soil making, the soil porous, and rich in organic matter as explained by Sangtan and Sangtan. Again, Sangtan and Sangtan enumerated the sources of organic fertilizer as follows. First, animal waste. Comes from cattle, carabao, pig, goat, poultry, and horse manure or urine. Animal manures are probably the most commonly available organic material used for their fertilizer value. Crop waste, rice straw, corn stalks, weeds, stumbles, plant leaves, husk are examples of crop waste. Human inhabitation waste are night soil, sewage, and garbage. Green manure consists of ipil ipil leaves, legumes, and madre cacao leaves. Other sources are animal bone ash, seaweeds, and guano. The second kind of fertilizer is inorganic. Inorganic Fertilizer or chemical fertilizer usually result from the chemical process such as sulfuric acid treatment or rock phosphates to produce superphosphate. It consists of materials processed or transformed into a chemical material or fertilizer. Types of fertilizer based on the fertilizer element present. Single element fertilizer contains only one of the major fertilizer elements. Examples, ammonium sulfate, urea, and superphosphate. Urea is the most important nitrogenous fertilizer in the market with the highest nitrogen content. The main function of urea fertilizer is to provide the plants with nitrogen to promote green leafy growth and make the plants look lush. Urea also aids the photosynthesis process of plants. Ammonium sulfate. The primary use of ammonium sulfate is as a fertilizer for alkaline soils. 
in the soil, the ammonium ion is released and forms a small amount of acid, lowering the pH balance of the soil, while contributing essential nitrogen for plant growth. Incomplete fertilizer is mixed fertilizer which does not contain all the three major fertilizer elements, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It contains only two major elements. And lastly, the complete fertilizer. Complete fertilizer, also called 14-14-14, as equal percentage of nitrogen, phosphates, and potassium. These elements help plants carry out their full life cycle. You can use it on flowering plants or specimens with colorful foliage. Okay, let us test if you understand the difference between organic and inorganic fertilizer by having a short activity. In this activity, I will show you a picture and you identify if it is organic or inorganic fertilizer. Let us start. Here is the first picture. Is this organic or inorganic fertilizer? Type your answer in the comment section. Correct! This is an organic fertilizer. Crop waste is one of the examples of organic fertilizer. The second picture. Is this organic or inorganic fertilizer? Type your answer in the comment box. Yes, the answer is inorganic fertilizer. Urea is an example of single element inorganic fertilizer that contains only one of the major fertilizer elements. The third picture. What kind of fertilizer is this? Comment your answer at the comment box below. Precisely, the answer is organic fertilizer. Rice husk is one of the examples of natural or organic fertilizer. I think all of you got a perfect score. Later, I will share an example recipe of organic fertilizer that you can do at home and use it in your Gulayan sa Tahanan project. Stay tuned, Fernandino Teens! Maya po oras kaya kayo, Fernandinos. Ako pala ay Elwin Arlserano ng City Tourism Office ng Ciudad San Fernando. Ngayon yung bulan na ini, pag masusyantaya yung National Heritage Month, nating temang Victory and Humanity, Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity. Kambe na nini, metong karang aktibidades na ng syudad, apin ng launching ng Bayong Heritage Passport. Ng Heritage Passport, apin ng metong karang proyekto ng kaya katamong syudad, yung pamana muna ng Mayor Edwin D. Santiago. Anong nuka rin makalagay lang ang dingega na ganang heritage sites, heritage structures, naakit ta mo kaya ka ta mo heritage district. Ah, kaya daw din kaya ni, ding importansya daw ding mapayin na tradisyon, kaya ni syudad, kalupa na ning pamangawang parol, ang po yung pamangalesa. May aho siyang heritage passport, uling atin kang dapat gawan, anong nukaran puntalan mo na ding at syukin passport, at saka ka mag-selfie, kay ba't kanta palto making tourism office, at mamiyalang sticker ka rin ega na ganang apuntulan mong lugar. At di mong may ngari ang tutong passport. Balong yung eni, panahon na yun eh, eh tamo makain bisa lumal, uli na ng COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya naman kimbanwa nga yun eh, agkatan ko lading bikers tamo, edad 18 hanggang 50, imbis na lumawot kayo po, di na nyo lang dita ka oras di kaya katamong heritage structures, kaya ni syudad. Anya naman ka rin mumu ng 50 bikers ang makayari kaya katamong heritage passport, may di na lang premium only San Fernando loot bag. Gawan nyo mo ba ang tamakapag-register, munta kayo mismo opisina na ng City Tourism 
yung munisipyo at saka kayong magdalang metong valid ID. Kabihan ninyo kayong heritage passport ating makasipit ang instruction nung nano pa yung dapat gawan. Anya naman ka rin hanggang kapadyak yan na nano ko pa. Tara na! Fernandino Teens TV And we are back, Fernandino Teens. Earlier, we were able to distinguish the differences between organic and inorganic fertilizer. Now, I am going to share an organic concoction fertilizer recipe that you can do at home. Today, I will teach you how to make a fermented plant juice. Do you have an idea what is fermented plant juice? Excellent! Fermented plant juice is a fermented extract of chlorophyll and young shoots of plants such as auxiliary buds, leaves, grasses, young fruits, and flowers. One important ingredient in producing FPJ is chlorophyll a green molecule in plants that absorb sunlight for photosynthesis. Here are the tools, materials, and ingredients needed in fermented plant juice. Local plants that are fast-growing like kangkong, legumes, and grasses. You can also use bamboo shoots, asparagus shoots, actively growing plant parts, and young fruits of cucumber, squash, melon, watermelon, ampalaya, and other cucurbits. With species that are found growing in the production area, young leaves of trees, banana trunks, young leaves and fruits of stress-tolerant crops are also good materials for fermented plant juice. You can use either brown sugar or molasses or whichever is available and can be brought at a lower price. You will need basin, ceramic pot or plastic pail, net or cloth bag, paper or cloth for cover, string, stone as weight, bolo, chopping board, marking pens, and glass jars. Watch this demonstration video carefully and remember the steps because this video tutorial will help you to learn how to make fermented plant juice. Here is the video. How to make fermented plant juice. Tools and materials needed. Chopping board. Plastic pail. Basin. Newspaper and plastic straw. Plug bag. 3 kilos banana crumb, 1 kilo brown sugar, steps in making fermented plant juice. Step number 1. Collect the plant materials while they are fresh. Microorganisms are still present. so that the juice can be easily extracted.
kg chop plant materials in a basin. Add 1 kg brown sugar, then mix thoroughly with your hand. Make sure that all plant materials are mixed with sugar so that the juice can be extracted easily. Processing and expected date. or you can apply it to the garden plants as source of organic plants. Use your fermented plant juice more effectively if it is stored for another one after hydration. Okay, that is the end of the video tutorial. I hope you were able to learn the correct steps in making fermented plant juice. Remember, 
Mix 2 tablespoons of fermented plant juice with 1 liter of clean water. In severe cases, double the dosage if needed. For application, for plants, prepare the same dosage. Spray it on the flowers and fruits one to two times a week. Doing this is more important at the onset of flowering and fruit setting because the mixture is rich in phosphorus and potassium, which are necessary during these stages. For animals, mix it with their drinking water using the same dosage above, two times a week. It can also be mixed with the feeds at the same frequency. Later, we will test your ability in remembering steps after some commercial breaks. Stay tuned! Hindi lamang sa larangan ng pangkabuhayan apektado ang maraming pamilyang Pilipino, kundi maging sa larangan ng pagkatuto ng bawat batang Pilipino. Inilunsad ng Siyudad ng San Fernando ang programa Nurturing Environment and System for Thriving or NEST, isang education community pantry na naglalayon para sa isang malawakang pagtulong, pagtabay at paggabay na ang focus ay ang makapagbigay ng tulong at suporta sa ating mga mag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng educational needs gaya na lamang ng school supplies, tutorial sessions, study tips, at iba pang mga pamamaraan na mas lalong makatutulong sa pag-angat ng ating edukasyon. Dahil hindi hadlang ang pandemya sa magandang kinabukasang naghihintay sa ating mga mag-aaral. Sino-sino nga ba ang mga kalahok sa programang ito? Sa pagtutulungan ng ating school administrators, guro, magulang, at iba pang mga miyembro ng ating komunidad gaya ng barangay officials at sangguniang kabataan ay siguradong magiging mas matagumpay ang programang ito. Paano nga ba ang magiging proseso ng naturang programa? Una, magkakaroon tayo ng isang Facebook group, ang Pampanga High School Nest Education Community Pantry na pangungunahan ng Educational Pantry Coordinator. Ang mga magulang, tagapangalaga at mga guro ay ia-add ng ating Educational Pantry members sa Facebook group na ito. Sa page na ito, maaaring i-post ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga o sino mang miyembro ng Educational Pantry ang kanilang mga kahilingan o requests. Kailangan ding ilagay ang pangalan ng mag-aaral, grade at section para sa mas agarang aksyon. Oo nga pala, hindi lang requests ang pwedeng i-post. Pwede rin mag-post ang mga nais magbigay ng tulong o mga gustong mag-donate. Sabi nga nila, sharing is caring. Pandaan na ang Facebook group na ito ay pribado at posts na may kaugnayan lamang sa page na ito ang maaaprobahan. Mayroon din palang Google Form na ipamamahagi kung saan maaari nating isumite ang ating requests o kahilingan. Paano naman ang mga walang internet access sa bahay? Huwag mangamba dahil merong mga nakalaang drop boxes ang ating paaralan na kung saan maaaring ihulog ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang kanilang requests. Sa mga nais namang mag-donate ng school supplies, maaaring ilagay ang mga ito sa tabi ng drop boxes. Maaari ring mag-donate ng mga kagamitan o cash donation kaakibat ang pagsusumite ng deed of donation form. Pangalawa, mahalaga ang ugnayan ng mga guro at ng mga magulang o tagapangalaga sa programang ito. Gamit ang video calls o chats ay ipahahayag ng mga guro ang adhikain ng programang ito sa mga magulang o tagapangalaga. Maaari ring gawin ang orientation na ito ng face-to-face -face, kasabay ng schedule ng kuhanan ng mga module. Gaya ng nabanggit, hindi lamang mga bagay ang maaaring i-donate. Pwede ring mag-conduct ng tutorial session, study tips, at iba pang mga kagamitan sa pagkatuto gayat ng mga aklat 
o kaya ay gadgets? Ikatlo, ang requested needs ng ating mga magulang o tagapangalaga ay ililista ng ating nest focal person. Ang mga coordinator naman ang mag-aayos ng mga ito. Ang advisors ng ating mga mag-aaral, guidance counselor, at iba pang mga guro ay ipaaalam sa ating mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang petsa at oras ng pamimigay ng requested needs na gaganapin sa paaralan. Sabi nga nila, it takes a village to raise a child. Kaya naman aktibo at iba yung pakikilahok ang inaasahan sa pagsasanib puwersa ng paaralan at barangay na siyang tutukoy sa pangangailangan ng bawat Fernandinong mag-aaral at kikilos upang matugunan ito sa tulong at suporta rin ng mga miyembro ng komunidad. Isang malawakang komunidad para sa isang produktibong educational community pantry ay tiyak na lilikha ng iba yung pagkilos upang maging mas magaan at madali ang pagkatuto ng bawat kabataang Fernandino. Kaya naman tandaan, magbigay ayon sa kakayahan, kumuha ayon sa pangangailangan. Fernandino Teens TV You are still watching Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. A while ago, you were able to watch the video tutorial on how to make fermented plant juice. Now, let us test if you can still remember the steps making fermented plant juice by having an activity. Instructions you are going to arrange the steps in making fermented plant juice by numbering the steps from 1 to 9. Write your answers on your answer sheet. You can have one minute to answer the activity. Are you ready? Great! Your timer starts now. Okay, time's up. Let us check if you got the correct answers. Letter A. Put 3 kilograms chopped plant materials in a basin. Add 1 kilogram brown sugar or molasses. Then mix thoroughly with your hands. Make sure that all plant materials are mixed with sugar so that the juice can be extracted easily. What is your answer? Yes, this is the third step in making fermented plant juice. Letter B. Cover the pot or pail with paper or cloth and secure with a string or rubber band. On the cover, write the date of the processing and the expected date of harvest. What is your answer? Correct. This is the sixth step in making fermented plant juice. Letter C. Put the mixture in a net bag or cloth bag. This is done so that the extracted juice will ooze from all sides of the bag. What is your answer? Good. This is the fourth step in making fermented plant juice. 
Letter D. Collect the plant materials early in the morning while they are fresh and the microorganisms are still present. Do not wash the plant materials. What is your answer? Great! This is the first step in making fermented plant juice. Letter E. Store the container with the bag mixture in a cool, dry, shady place. What is your answer? Right! This is the seventh step in making fermented plant juice. Letter F. Cut the plant materials into small pieces so that the juice can be easily extracted. What is your answer? You got it! This is the second step in making fermented plant juice. Letter G. Put the bag mixture in a ceramic pot or plastic pail and put weight to compress the mixture. What is your answer? Fantastic! This is the fifth step in making fermented plant juice. Letter H. Collect the fermented extract and preserve in dark colored glass jar. What is your answer? You've got it. This is the ninth step in making fermented plant juice. Letter I. After seven days, Leave the bug mixture and squeeze, squeeze hard to get the remaining extracts. What is your answer? You've got it! This is the eighth step in making fermented plant juice. Did you get the perfect score? Wow! Fantastic! I think you are now ready to make your own organic fertilizer on your desired organic concoction depending on the availability of ingredients in your place. For your performance activity in this second quarter, you are going to make fermented plant juice. Document your performance by taking pictures. Here are some reminders. Please ask assistance from your parent or guardian while doing the activity. Wear a complete personal protective equipment. Observe the safety precautions. And for students who do not have gadgets and internet connection, write the steps that you performed and include drawings. This is the scoring rubric for this activity. Note, your family members will be the one who will rate your finished product. Maybe you are wondering why there is a need to learn all of this. Let me tell you, the use of organic fertilizers has advantages of being cheap, improving soil structure texture, aeration, increasing the soil water retention, abilities, and stimulating healthy root development. If you apply this lesson at home, you will have your own organic fertilizer that you can use in your home gardening project. As I end this session, I want to leave this quotation of Dennis Waitley. A failure is like fertilizer. It stinks to be sure, but it makes things grow faster in the future. These are the references that I used in this learning episode. I am Ma'am Jerica Cabrera Orje, and see you again for another episode of Fernandina Teens TV Season 2. Thank you.
sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin Hindi laging nandyan Dapat mong harapin Kami iyong kasama Sa bawat akin Magkaakbay nating Lulutasin Dito sa Gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanood